Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm making a video that was inspired by you and we're going back and starting homeschool in kindergarten. And so if you are interested in this type of content and other homeschool and lifestyle content, please remember to subscribe and let's get into it. Okay, so I had someone suggest to make a video of what curriculum I would use if we could start kindergarten over again with my first child. We've been homeschooling for, I think this is our seventh year, which is crazy to me. And it was a very like quick thing all of a sudden that we had to homeschool. And after my oldest had been in kindergarten for a month, and so I pulled him out and we didn't really have a whole lot of resources. We just kind of did what we could do and that was that. Was that. <laughs> and it evolved over the years. And so I thought through it and first of all, one curriculum immediately came to my mind and maybe some of you can guess what it is, but as what I would use for my like main resource, if I had known about it and if all the resources had been available at the time, this is what I would have used. So I'm going to go through some of the main subjects and a few just additional things today and tell you if you're starting kindergarten now or you have other kids that might be starting kindergarten, if you're just starting homeschool, right? If you're new to homeschool, this video will hopefully be helpful for you and give you some ideas of where to start and what curriculums I think are some of the best out there. All right, so the good and the beautiful is gonna make a really strong appearance in this video because it is one of my favorite curriculums and it's what I would choose for a lot of topics if I had to go back and do kindergarten again. So for math, I would use the good and the beautiful simply kindergarten math. I really, really love it. And I wasn't part of the good, like I didn't do the Good and the Beautiful curriculum years ago. And so I, but I'm pretty sure the simple, the simple Good and the Beautiful math is more recent. And so I don't even think it was an option, but they did have other math. I know some people have mixed feelings about it. I never used it. So I would choose to use the simple Good and the Beautiful math. I don't have it here to show you because I don't have anybody that's using it. My first grader is in second grade math and stuff. And so I don't have it to actually show you, but I absolutely love it. And all the younger grades for their math come with a manipulatives box, which I really enjoy. And it has, you know, a few things that they'll use for their lessons. Some of it has magnets, some of it comes with a magnet board or a whiteboard or a clock as they get a little bit older. And there's just a lot of really cool, fun things in there. So for math, that is definitely what I would have chosen for kindergarten. Okay, so moving on to the language arts section. Sorry, I have a mint in my mouth. I just can't seem to be healthy this winter. I don't know what it is. If it's just, you know, the winter, <laughs> if it's a lot of stress, if it's just postpartum kind of stuff, I'm not really sure. but. We're struggling over here, I'm working on it. So language arts, I have a few different options. I do have the Good and the Beautiful's Kindergarten to show with you, and this is what I would pick first and foremost is this. I have this because my first grader is actually using this right now. And this is where I'd say, pick what works for your kid, because yes, they have a kindergarten option, but not all kindergartners are going to be ready for this. And so you might have to choose their pre-K options, which are also really great or something else that we have really loved over the years, especially for preschoolers and then maybe kids that are struggling readers, is to teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons. And it's something you could just go over a little bit every day, but they're still having some exposure to those sounds. And so this is a little bit more simplified if they need it to be simplified. And then she made, my first grader made it about halfway through, I think, with her dad on that book. Whoops, we're losing stuff out of here that she's put in here. Before we jumped over to this, because she started picking up reading a little bit better. So we've jumped back into this. And something I really like about this, they recently redid all the younger grades for their language arts, is these booster cards that come with it. And so here it will tell you you know, the different card numbers. And I think in this, in this book, it tells you what booster card to be on for that particular lesson. And if you're not there yet, you just would practice these for the day instead of doing something in the workbook as well. And so it, I, I really like that. I think that's nice and make sure that your kids are at the pace they need to be for new information, new words or sounds or blending or whatever it is. And so this also has like little stickers so you can see a sticker down here for what she has passed off already. 
And then once this is blank right here for where she could put a sticker and they'll go through this and then some of these, so the ones that have the little pyramids, these are things to know before. And so if you're unsure whether to start this curriculum right away, you might have them go through this part. And I'm sure a lot of this is online. A lot of their stuff is downloadable unless you want, you know, to buy the actual books. So these ones, these little pyramids have a book that you read at the end of it. And that's, we have this little pack here for booster A and it has all these little books in it. And so then she'll read that. And then if, you know, she does a good job, she can pass it off. And if not, you know, you just keep practicing until they can get it. And this is actually using this to start with is how I knew she just wasn't ready to use this curriculum because like I said, it has these masters before the course. And as we started going through them, I was like, we're just not ready. So then we went to back to this book of teaching or how to read in hundred easy lessons. So I would start with the kindergarten curriculum, unless you already know your child is a little bit struggling with reading and then maybe just start with hundred easy lessons. Or like I said, you could go to their pre-K version and use that. They might have a pre-kindergarten one. I can't remember what they're all called, but I, you could just start there if you're unsure. And then for handwriting, I don't have again, that handwriting to show you because none of my kids are at that point right now. And my younger kids aren't old enough for those. But I love the Good and the Beautiful's handwriting. This is level two. They do have, I believe it's a kindergarten level. I think that's just what it's called. And then they also have some pre-K ones that are more like doodle books that are like half of this size. And so if they're, again, struggling with writing, you might want to start with the pre-K ones. If they're ready to go, you can start with the kindergarten ones. But I love how there is writing, you know, they're practicing letters, but there's also a lot of drawing. So they're still strengthening those hand muscles without maybe getting too frustrated with writing because sometimes some curriculums with handwriting, it's just too much. It's too much writing. We've tried a lot with language arts. We've tried a lot of different curriculums. And honestly, this is my favorite and this is what works the best. And it's all basically in one. So if you like to pick and choose from different curriculums, you can try that but the good and the beautiful incorporates everything into their language arts curriculum all the vocab all the spelling as they get older too they do a lot more with geography and art and all that kind of stuff so i really really love it all right science suggestions so again the good and the beautiful <laughs> they just recently came out with these science books for little hands and so i think this is meant for like pre-k to second grade because a lot of their other science units start at third grade and then go up from there. And I love, love, love those science units. And we actually haven't had a chance to use this book. I have ambitions, always do, and we just haven't gotten into it. But this is science stories in here that you could read with your child. And then this is the like parent guide of different things you could do. And I believe, I don't know if it also came with other books or if I just put them as add-ons. There's other suggestions for some books that might be helpful, but it has discussion questions. It has story time. It has opening, you know, for talking about tree bark. That's lesson four, okay, for talking about tree sap and syrup. And so if you have some kids, this is the hardest part for me is it's a little overwhelming already to have to teach my older kids their science stuff. And then if we'd have to sit down and do this with some of the little kids, that would just be a lot. Maybe by the time my two youngest are at this age, you know, in pre-K and second, which is still a couple years away, my older kids will be a little bit more self-sufficient in all their subjects. And so I can sit down and do this with them. They also, this is Fields and Flowers. They came out with another one. I wrote it down. It's called Winds and Waves. And so that one's brand new, like within this last year, I believe. I don't have that one, but that's also another option, I guess, depending what you like, or you could do both of them. But they do have an option, you know, for little hands. And so I feel like this is a great thing for science or, you could do some sort of dispensary bins or you could do both. Okay, I feel like that's kind of a great option for just science or STEM in general. And so like KiwiCo has some really great options for like the Kiwi Crate itself is for five and five to eight year olds. And then they have the Koala Crate, I believe, for the younger, like three and four year olds. So again, depending where your child is, those could be a great option for you. 
And then I also made a list of some other sensory bins that we have liked. Well, I just have two other ones that I feel might be good for this age group. So the first one is the Knowledge Crate and they have a preschool one and then they have a school like school age one. So the preschool is three to five years and then school age is six to 10 years. And this is a quarterly crate, so it's like done by season. And I'm sorry, I don't have, I don't have one to show you here. <laughs> I actually went on their website and was like, oh, this is so fun. And so I actually ordered a lot <laughs> for all of my kids, but we're part of a charter that will pay for that kind of stuff. I wouldn't normally just go spend that much money because the quarterly ones are $100. And then I think you still have to pay some shipping. And then they have smaller ones. They have lots of little sensory bins as well, like mini on the go ones, which again, they didn't have those a few years ago. And so if you wanna get those, they have a little bit bigger sensory bins. They have, like I said, their preschool and their school age like boxes have tons of different activities in them that cover tons of different subjects. So you could also use those for math and for language arts and for science and for art. And they have, you know, the school age one and the preschool one. You can kind of decide where your child fits in. If they seem like, oh, they, you want them to be able to accomplish all the tasks very easily, I would go with the preschool one. If they're a little bit more advanced, you could go with the school age one. And they have different themes and stuff like that dealing with the winter. And so they're really, really fun. And I really like how much stuff they have. And again, when you're just starting homeschooling, it's nice to just have something you can pull out and give to them. And if you don't have the budget to do that, you can obviously just go on Pinterest and find simple activities to do. That's kind of what we did when we started out. But having some extra activity, because a lot of this other schoolwork, especially for young children, maybe takes 30 to 45 minutes. And so having something that they can do afterwards that's a little bit hands-on would be good for them. Another one that we have tried that I've liked is Young, Wild, and Friedman, which is like mostly Play-Doh with a whole bunch of manipulatives for the Play-Doh and they're themed. And so they'll have like a birthday one. So all the little toys that come with it are like birthday themed and you can have the Play-Doh and you play with the Play-Doh and all that kind of stuff. And it's really a fun idea as well. And so if you want something like that, that's just already done for you and you can just pull it out, that's another one I'd recommend it, at least for this age group. I think it's really, really great. My last suggestion, especially for kindergartners, is to just go play outside or inside. I'd recommend outside if you can. <laughs> But, you know, above all else, I think that age group just needs to play. You know, you do a little bit of like book work and stuff, but then just let them play and explore and that goes a long ways. You don't have to stress about it, you know, just go outside. If you have older kids and you're trying to figure out how to make that work, maybe sit outside and do their schoolwork and let the littler, littler ones play um, or take, have, you know, one of them that's finished with their schoolwork go out with some of the littler ones and play. You know, whatever you feel comfortable with, you could go to a playground and let kids play while older ones finish schoolwork and stuff like that. You could find a way to make it work. But I think ultimately for that age group, just let them get in lots of playtime. And I feel like that's how they're gonna learn and grow the most. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video of what I would pick if we could go back and start homeschooling kinder and kindergarten all over again. <laughs> I hope it was helpful for you, maybe gave you some different ideas, and comment down below curriculums you have used and loved, especially for that age group, so that we can help everybody else out that's gonna be seeing this video, and maybe some that you didn't like, you know, the ones you liked, the ones you didn't like, and maybe why, so that we can help everybody out here. And remember to give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you next time.